here from Santa Susana a year ago. We now have all of our classrooms and um, library and offices here as well. We provide uh, religious education for children and adults, baptisms, uh, confirmation, first communion, uh, weddings. We do a lot of weddings from outside. People come here uh, from the United States to be married. And um, I'm also the chaplain to Marymount International School, which is in North Rome, where we have a satellite mass on Sundays. I also offer spiritual walking tours uh, to different churches in Rome. Father Greg has these fantastic tours that he does of various churches in Rome, and it's wonderful because um, when I lived here, we used to have a whole group of friends that would go on his tours, and we'd make an entire day of it. Being in Rome, it's being, you know, it's, it's another, it's Europe. I mean, it's another world, and um, it's far from home. You know, it's six hours earlier than New York City, so watching football games and all of that sort of thing are strange and hard, uh, minor details of life. We'd see all these different churches that we normally wouldn't see on our own. So it was a great event that I really looked forward to, and I still do. It's always difficult to get everyone involved in a, in a good liturgy, to bring good music and preaching and participation in the community together. And it doesn't always work, but when it does work, it's really good. I've been in the parish council for, I guess, four years now. So I basically help in, uh, in the parish council, uh, in the social life committee, uh, events and whatever. People coming from different parts of the world uh, in, in the right spirit of uh, an, an open church. My responsibilities as library coordinator are um, deciding which stock from donations we accept into the library, which we might put up for sale. Um, I manage volunteers, so making sure there's a volunteer on hand for each and every shift. When the people see the potential and then their place in the, in the church um, is very important. Well, I think actually the community here was more impactful to me than my community that I had in New Jersey for 20 years. I'm Catholic since my family was Catholic, but uh, I wasn't going to, to church. And then I met them in a normal and spontaneous way. I was uh, involved and uh, I'm now going to church basically every Sunday. like to see during my time here is awareness being built of what a treasure this is. When I'm trying to learn my Italian and to practice it out in the streets or in the stores and they realize I'm struggling, Italians are so friendly and so nice, they speak English. So it's hard. A lot of our people don't speak Italian, so they want to help out in some of uh, the charities, but they need to be speaking Italian to do that. So we have this fundraising gala in December, St. Nicholas Charity Serrata. The Serrata is a big party that um, Father Greg organizes and he donates all the revenue to six different charities in Rome. They deal with refugees and migrants, victims of domestic abuse. It's basically a dinner dance, silent auction, live auction, and raffle. Father Greg tries very hard to um, include everybody. We raise uh, a lot of money. This event needs, of course, a lot of uh, help by the, the people who are members of the parish because uh, it's a very big event with 200 people. The people who are members of our community were recognized as people who are concerned with people at the edge and outside, etc. There's an enormous amount of, of charity that goes on uh, through this community. These people who are members, like, this is a second family for them. They've been here. 20, 30, I mean the library itself in some iteration has been open over 60 years. It's putting those communities together so that they can share the best of their cultures. The 
libraries function as a part of all that really is community building. So I see the Paulist Fathers in that sense as creating this whole community of English speakers from I don't even know how many different countries. Belonging to this church really opened up to me new horizons. People know each other, the fact that there is the hospitality after the Mass, so you have the chance to stay there 10 minutes, have a chat with someone. I feel like I've been accepted into a second family. It's lovely, and I'm not sure I would have met any of these people outside the library. I realized that I actually made better friends here in the two years I was here than in most of my years at home. Asking the parents to be more involved in the children's education, we realized that the parents, many of them have been away from the church and they have issues with the church. And so they come and they feel it's safe to talk about things and they start going to church again. At my age, or I mean, when you're a parent, uh, you don't even think to, to go back again to, no, to church for what you just said. But the perspective in which you, you watch things at 50 uh, or at 40 is, of course, different. For our program here, we demand that the parents come to every session. It's only 12 sessions a year. It's not that much to ask. And while the children are in class, the parents are in class with myself or Father Bernie, or today it's Father Mark David Janus, we found that adults still have a children's viewpoint of religion. And so we try to raise the elevation of that. We relate very well to the mission of the Paulist Fathers here, even though this is not the United States. There's a large amount of people here who are from the United States, North America, but a lot of the people are from Italy or different parts of Europe, different parts of the world. It was a big thing for other people and it made me happy. We were able to um, take 25 parishioners to the Pope's morning mass uh, three years ago. It, it's a different approach to religion here than it is at home. You sort of have to evangelize not just people who have no faith or no religion or no background, you're also evangelizing people who are Catholic. One of the things that we do, I think, really well is reconciliation. There's a lot of people, because of what their situation is, they feel they can't go to communion. And so we try to offer them ways throughout the year to come and talk personally about how they might be able to feel more comfortable going to communion. We're also part of what's called Churches Together in Rome. We do a big, of course, a week of prayer for Christian unity in January, but we also do a big fundraiser, a rice bowl project for some community like uh, Syria. Every street you turn down, you see a church, and it just makes you want to learn more about your religion and your faith. I spend more time thinking about it here than I do when I'm home. It just reaffirms your belief because it's everywhere. People put that much into this faith that they have. There's got to be something to it. <laughs>